Here at Nerd Dynamite, we only present the most unique decks, and I have a very unique take on Agent Venom. The card that I guarantee you won't see in other people's Agent Venom deck is Fastos. Let's really lean in to the increase in power and also decrease in the cost or further increasing the power. There's also Bast, who increases the power of the cards in our hand. Black Swan is here to unload all of the one cost we have in our hand, including Ant-Man, Rocket Raccoon, Silver Sable, and Nico. If you don't have any of these one cost cards, almost any other will do based on your collection. We round out the deck with the combo of Iron Man and Mystique, who can also copy Ant-Man. And Shang-Chi just finds his way into almost all of my decks. This is more of a fun deck, but that said, I've been exclusively using it to climb in this symbiote season that I'm in right now. If you don't have Fastos, I don't blame you. And he is replaceable by another card like Strong Guy or just another one cost card. Okay, up next we have good old Frank. They get my Mystique. Let's hope they are not a Mr. Negative ongoing deck. They are a Bounce Hit Monkey deck. Which, that's another good replacement if you don't have Fastos, Hit Monkey. But that gets more to the meta version of the Agent Venom deck. Uh, I get Bass down. That is a good Bast hit. A lot of power. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They get their Agent Venom on turn two. We do not. Sinister London is very good for us if we can draw into Iron Man. But with Hit Monkey, that's not bad as well. I. Still hold. Depending on what I draw next turn, I might get down both Ant-Man and Mystique, right? And then hold and... Okay, hits Rocket and Wasp. That is hilarious. There is my Agent Venom. I think I want to get... Let's go... Agent Venom and Nico. Beasting everything back, okay. Well, not everything. I don't know what my next turns are going to be, honestly. I would love to draw into Iron Man, and I don't. So I think it's Hit Monkey plus a bunch of cards. They also have Hit Monkey. I could draw into Shang Chi. <laughs> they did not want priority. Boy, did they did not want priority. There's Sean. Silver Sable. Ant Man and Sean. You figure they play their hit monkey. It's worth one extra cube. I'm not running the math. <laughs> so maybe I lose even without... Oh, they kept it under. Nice, they kept it under. So this is just going to be where my Sean ends up, I think. Or how lucky I get with these. Okay. That goes middle, and Sean goes... Is that still not enough? <laughs> oh, it was. We win the tiebreaker. <laughs> How about that? They were... I think they were ready for the Sean. Or maybe they... No, they were limited by space, and I think they wanted to maximize their space. Quite frankly... Well, did we, How lucky did we get? Six and a half hours later. Maybe it did matter. We would have lost by one if that, all that math. I probably cut a lot of that out, but <laughs> if, if my math, uh, who knows if my math was correct or not. Maybe depending on the spawns we lose, 
But again, nobody snapped. It was worth it for me to stay in. And we pulled this one out. Okay, next up we have So You Mad. I am positive they are a 4E motor <laughs> with a name like that. Do I get Bass down now? I will wait one turn. Bass is free. That was a bad wait. <laughs> so be it though. Eternity range. They will play for that. I will take the rock. I don't want to clog myself up. Yep, there we go, as expected. And the last location, of course, is Asteroid M. We have drawn every one cost card we have. And none of our bigger threats. A normal deck. There is Agent Venom. Get him down. Let's see what I can draw into. This is an all likelihood retreat. This is why you should snap aggressively. This player is not snapping aggressively because I could have been chased out, but now they're giving me an opportunity to draw into the cards I need. And you saw we got to draw into another card before they snapped. We still have only drawn our low cost cards, so we bail. Okay, next up we have Neat, Neat, Neat. We hold on turn one. They have seven cards, so they are a Agatha deck. That is why you check the deck. We do have Sean for that Agatha though. I will Bast. Turn two Bast, I like a turn two Bast. You can get more cards. Ooh, this is a snap, right? I just don't need priority. That's the issue. Okay. Victory. So I clearly with Bast, I'm signaling to them I have low cost cards in my hand. Now, with a Sif or a Moon Knight, they could play that, get the discard, and then play either Ghost Rider or the Ebony Blade. So that was an option. Maybe they didn't have it in their hand, which is why I snapped. I'm not gonna let them draw into it. But also we were well positioned to win three lanes. I didn't have time to think through it. Maybe I should have, cause I snapped. <laughs> but whether I want priority or not, I think I would have gone for no priority and just win two out of the three lanes because they could only put big power in one lane. So if I go rocket, or what was it, turn three? Oh, maybe I just wouldn't have had priority anyway and just play a Fastos and then Silver Sable and Rocket use them to carry one, one of the other two lanes because they can only play one card. So that probably would have been the, the route I would have taken. Next up, we have Peter. Central Park. Vast really only hits Ant-Man, so that's not too big of a hit, so I will save it. Eight cards in their deck. Is this a bot? A turn one Ant-Man. I mean, I definitely get down Vast now to hit the Iron Man. I am pretty sure this is a bot. 15, so very similar collection. Oh, they're in a alliance. It is not a bot. Uh, Asteroid M, I don't like. Bastos, and then Iron Man, I guess, into Asteroid M. Or do I play... Do I stop Strange Academy from moving? I think I do. 
So this is what we will do. They expect it to move. No Sean. That's okay. Silver Sable. Get the Iron Man down here. Nobody snapped. I need to be able to plug Asteroid M, though. So let's see what they have. It might be an Ultron play. No, it is not. So it might be a blue marble. If Dazzler gets another plus two, so that's 15. So this is blue marble. It might be Iron Man. Six to 12. So if I go Mystique, but again, I need to plug that other side is the problem. So I can't get enough power. Ugh. So I just can't play Mystique. Does the pig even move? Because the pig is a zero cost card. What's the math on this? Let's just do this for science. Let's see if the pig slides. I'm curious. Okay, there's the blue marble. So yeah, I think it comes down to if the pig slides. And I guess I could have avoided that if I had played Silver Sable to the left. The pig does not slide. Because Asteroid M says after you play a three or four cost card, not a card that costs three or four. That's a very important distinction. And the pig is a zero cost card. So by hitting the Sean, they allowed me to perform some science. They allowed me to win. <laughs> and I did guess one of their potential options was Blue Marvel, especially because they were tied left. That gets more power left. That gets just more power all across the board and not only in a single lane. So by forfeiting the right lane, I was able to anticipate that and put just enough power left and play strong for middle in case they wanted to go the Iron Man route. Gilgamesh probably would have beat us. Oh no, because how many cards were buffed? There weren't a lot of cards buffed. Ant-Man and Dazzler. So Gilgamesh wouldn't have beat us. So it would have just been Iron Man or the Blue Marvel to go wide. But that's why I played more power middle to beat the Iron Man. And I was victorious. Okay, we're up against Roided Dolphin. Nidavellir. I think I go Agent Venom down turn two, since I have a choice. The Zabu's a little scary. They are an Erisham deck. So it is an Erisham Zabu. I will get down Agent Venom first. I will stay through this. The thing about Agent Venom and Bast, I don't mind Basting after Agent Venom. It's only one power loss, and then depending on the card, it's not even that big of a deal. Iron Man left is probably going to be super key. Death's Domain, fantastic. So I need to draw into, so I'm definitely gonna Bast. That gets my Mystique and Wasp. The only way I get into right is with Nico's move spell. I think I hold. I will hold. Okay, they wanted board space. What?
this is a Legion play. Am I about to see a Legion play? I think I'm about to see a Legion play. So activate this. I don't think there's anything to do this turn either. They've already snapped. I am so confused. Do you have a Luke Cage? Are you going to play Iron Man? And win off a tiebreaker? Maybe, because I can't double up with Mystique and they can. Or they can't double up, actually. I don't have a clue. I guess I'm seeing this out. Maybe this is the Legion play. No, it's not. I am so confused. We almost assuredly win a tiebreaker with Iron Man. Oh, easily. <laughs> Why did they move the Loki? They must have got trash from our hand. I think my deck is decent into Loki. And these Arishem players snap into Loki because it's typically a good play. But I play a lot of decks that stink into Loki. So you saw they got my Black Swan. They got my Fastos. They got my Bast. They got a Rocket Raccoon. Like, these are not good cards. How do they have... Is that why? Did Ag was Agatha controlling them with that Loki play? Maybe. Okay. Uh, thank you for the four cubes. I'm pretty sure this is a very... Yes. Hi, CL. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay. Next up, we have... Okay. Next up, we have the Goat Seeker. Central Park. What fun. I will hold Bast for turn two. The more I play this deck, I'm in favor of, if I have a choice between Black Swan and Bast, to Bast on turn two instead and just get Black Swan down on a later turn. You have turns three and four that are pretty available to you because especially if you have Black Swan in your hand, you're saving as many one cost cards as you can for the last turn anyway. So there's not much you're doing on turns three and four where you can't fit in a black swan. There is the Fastos. So now I will get down Bast and I want to conserve as much space as possible. So I will get these cards down middle. I'm staying. This is not a good stay. Based on my strategy videos that I release from time to time, I say when a player snaps, you should evaluate your hand. Can you win with the cards in your hand? No. <laughs> I cannot win with the cards in my hand. But uh, I'm about to stop recording anyway, so let's, let's go for it. Let's go for the double fastos. Hopefully he goes mid. He does. Yes, and of course with Athena Elsa deck, oof, we we drew into a card. We drew into a card. Get down Black Swan and I think Silver Sable? Just to continue to clear space? Or do I need to worry about that? I'll be patient. So of course the Iron Man right is fantastic. If I have drawn to Mystique, that's even better. Two Elsas is fantastic. They can move their Athena around. They are super well positioned. But we actually drew one of the strong cards that we needed to be able to win. You activate Black Swan first so you don't forget. <laughs> And you slam down an Iron Man. 
If I had Mystique, I would snap. But I don't. So I will not snap. Is this a vision? Hey, Jean Grey, but guess what? We have all zero cost I cards. <laughs> I so Jean Grey does not bother us. There is Nico at six. Yes, we have Ant-Man is just worth more power. So get the Jean Grey down here, Ant-Man here. And because I have the Iron Man middle, I think that's where I want to stack my power. Rocket is worth seven. Here and here. What am I doing? Am I doing this right? Undo. <laughs> Ant-Man. Oh, oh, I gotta play Wasp. Uh, no, I don't want to play Wasp. I want to play Silver Sable. That's worth more points. Ant-Man. Rocket. And Nico. Okay. Let's see how this goes. There we go. Victory. I I actually did a hope stay. <laughs> Again, because this is my last match. So I said, why not? And it paid off. We Us drawing into a Agent Venomed Iron Man is super strong and like i said if i had drawn into mystique i definitely would have snapped because doubling up that iron man is just ridiculous but also i would have had to play mystique left but still that that would have been enough then to win left as well thank you for watching this deep into the video and blah 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 <laughs> and thank you to my members as usual this is where i kind of talk about this deck more in depth but for me, this is more of a fun deck. I like an excuse to be able to use underused cards and Fastos is an underused card. I got him on his release and I'm so happy. I feel like I found a home for him paired with Bast and Agent Venom. You can just get a lot of weird wins and they don't necessarily look strong all the time, but it's hard for your opponent to know exactly and be, to be able to predict what you are going to do because you have discounted cards, you have elevated cards, you kind of put cards in a quote-unquote broken state. Half of me wanted to name the title of this video, this is how you break cards or something to that effect, because your cards do turn into busted versions of themselves. When an Iron Man has four power, that's ridiculous. When Mystique has power, any type of power, that's ridiculous. So this deck can put out a huge amount of power and unexpected power, and it can definitely beat humans, as you got to see, and it just eats up bots, but I don't show those games. Otherwise, if you use out this deck, let me know how it does for you. Until next time, there's also Bast, who increases the power of the cost. The heck? 